All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at the different blending modes we have when working with fields. Now, you could be using these blending modes in fields in several different ways, whether it's MoGraph, whether it's vertex maps, selection tags, all those types of things. But once you understand it in one context, it should transfer over to the others. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here's the finished result uh, of what we're gonna be working with here, taking a look at the different blending modes we have when working with fields. And we'll talk about all the different blending modes, um, starting with normal all the way down to clip. And like I said, you can use these not just in MoGraph, um, but this works any place you use fields. And um, I mentioned that can be in vertex tags, in selection tags, and I think there's a few other places as well, deformers, okay? So here is how we're going to start. All right, now in our first setup here, um, really all these setups, what we have is a cloner um, with a plane effector applied. And in that plane effector, it's telling it to move the clones 300 centimeters up on the Y axis. And how that effector is being applied is currently with a linear field. Okay, so we can see that linear field being applied. All right, I think it's also important to point out that I did scale up the field. And when you are scaling fields, it helps to be in object mode versus model mode because model mode's only gonna change the length. It's not gonna change the actual size of the icon, which can make things a little bit easier. If I just show you what a linear field looks like, if I create one here, um, you can see how much smaller it is uh, than our other one. And so that can just make it a little bit trickier um, to see what's going on here. The other thing I want to mention about these linear fields is I've set the color remap here to gradient. Uh, I think that's a little bit easier way to kind of visualize how our field is being applied. So um, from this left point here where it's 0% outside of it um, to the second part of our linear field where it's white, okay, which means our field has been applied 100%. And inside that linear field is where we see that transition. Now, if you want to adjust that transition, that's actually what's happening in the remap section here. And I've gone over this in previous videos, so I won't talk about it too much right now. Um, but that is also something that's very important to working with MoGraph. Now, the meat and potatoes of what we're gonna be talking about today, like I said, is gonna be in the fields tab and these blending modes right here. Now. In order for these blending modes to really do anything, you need to have more than one field in here. So what we're gonna do is add some spherical fields on top of this um, and talk about this. Now in this first one, with it just being set to normal, actually not gonna really do much here. I can take my spherical field and drag it in here. Um, in case you weren't familiar with that, uh, it's really similar to if you just came here to your field objects and choose spherical field, you can see um, it gets added to this list. We have our new spherical shape added, okay? So this is just a different approach to creating uh, fields, just dragging it in here. And it's really the only association that matters. It doesn't matter if um, your field is a parent or a child of the effector itself. So that is something to think about with this. Now, um, as a basic overview here, with our layers, our fields, or whatever else we may be adding in here, because while um, we're gonna primarily talk about these blending modes and working with fields, you know, we have plenty of other things in here as well. We have field layers, which really allow us to use other object types as a layer in here. Um, before we get into some of our other options like modifier layers, um, which I consider really like adjustment layers, okay? Um, those work similarly, all right, but uh, we won't be getting into them today. It's also important to point out that we have two different options here, one for value, okay? So if you want a field to change the value, the position scale rotation of an object, uh, or if you want it to use color, okay? And you can do this on a per field basis. The blending modes are what we're gonna get here, uh, get to here very soon. And lastly, we have opacity as a way of working with these as well. Now, I wanna point out that this this whole process is very similar to working in Photoshop. So if you're familiar with those blending modes or even After Effects for that matter, I guess even Illustrator has these, uh, then it should be similar um, for the most part. Now we have a few of these which you may not be familiar with like Minimum, like uh, Clip, maybe Max, but for the most part, uh, they should function the same. And what I wanna point out here is that 
uh, you can look up the definition of these blending modes in Photoshop and they should all, like I said, work very similarly here. So multiply, if you wanna read what multiply is supposed to do, great. Same with screen, um, add, all that stuff, overlay. So those can give you some real technical definitions if that's what you're into. I am more interested in the visual um, interpretation of these blending modes. And so that's really what I'm going to be focusing on here. Um, I did have the help file pulled up. I think I, I reset my user interface, so it went away. Um, but the help file was, Cinema 4D's help file was not very good, uh, very useful when it comes to kind of understanding these blending modes. So that is why we're here. But you can see when we add a second um, layer, a second field on top that with its blending mode set to normal, that is the only field we will see. Okay, so it's just like layers in Photoshop until we adjust the blending mode or adjust the opacity. Moving on here to minimum, okay, so come over here to minimum, drag that field in, that spherical field on top, switch the blending mode here to minimum. Notice how it looks pretty similar here, um, but it's actually changed things just a bit. And uh, with this, the colors are also going to be important, especially when we get to say clip, which is going to work very similar here to uh, minimum. So um, let's just turn off this one so we can kind of compare it to the original. There we go. Uh, and you can see how we are getting the minimum here. You can also see the linear field coming through with this as well. So it's almost like the linear field um, is working, but only inside of our um, spherical field. And where it's outside the spherical field, we get a value of zero. Remember, these, these colors can also be used to represent value. And that's another way I'd like to kind of think of this. So you can see zero outside of this field, um, spherical field, and we're only seeing the highest point inside the spherical field where the linear field is actually maxed out, okay? So if we wanna just kind of confirm that, actually, that's not quite true, um, but you can see how it is ramping up inside until it starts to mix with the um, offset or the inner offset of our field. And that's something else that I think can be useful here is working with this inner offset to kind of see um, what we get. Right, you can kind of get a better sense of what we're seeing now with the inner offset of this set to 100. So um, we are pretty much, like I said, seeing the linear field, but just inside our spherical field. And if we take that offset down, you can see how that offset also influences it. So it's mixing the values, taking the minimum, if you will, or adding the minimum to it to give us that particular result. Subtract is a little bit different, as you might expect. It is just taking that spherical field, and if any of our clones are inside that spherical field, it is subtracting those val um, those clones from the linear field. Once again, based on the values it's getting. So just to show that, I'm gonna come here to remapping, set this to 100%, and you can see um, now, because our field is essentially an all or nothing, um, uh, field where as long as it's inside our spherical field, it is being subtracted 100%. Whereas I start to dial this back, you can see that it's based on how far in to our spherical field it goes before it gets to that zero. And that's why you're seeing that little bit of tapering off and being subtracted. So um, once again, that's where the inner offset can help us uh, figure things out a little bit more. Moving on to multiply, all right? So multiply, drag that in here, set this to multiply, okay? And honestly, looks very similar to minimum. Now, is it the exact same? We can find out, all right, by just setting this to, what was it, min? And you can see that multiply actually does um, take things down just a little bit more. Uh, so that's important to consider when working with this. I do want to take this and adjust the inner offset because once again, that can help us see things as well. All right. And once again, switching the multiply to minimum, we can see that in this case, without that offset, there is, oops, no change. All right. So 
like I said, some of these can be very similar, especially in this particular setup. This could work very different if you were also adjusting the opacity here or if you had more than two fields, okay? But just keep that in mind. In this case, they are the same when you've adjusted the remapping. All right, let's get to overlay. So once again, if you're familiar with Photoshop, think about what you know these blending modes do in Photoshop. Multiply takes the darker values and adds them on top, kind of gets rid of the brighter values, okay, or ignores them. Um, overlay uh, preserves the brighter values, okay? So when we do that, oops, and switch this to overlay, right? We get a sense of both fields being added together instead of subtracted or minim, minimum um, or even multiplied like we were seeing. Okay, so you can see inside here where our spherical field is set to 100%, we also get the maximum value that we would have from the linear field. So it's really adding both of these, adding those values together, you know, gray plus gray equals kind of white type thing. That's not true, um, that would be more add, but it's still increasing the value. Okay, then if we just had um, this on its own, okay? So switch this to overlay, right? You can saw how those went down because they were a little bit darker. And that is overlay. So it's almost like a weaker add. And we'll get to add here very soon. We then get max. Max, same thing. Drag it in here, set it to max. And you can see, see even fewer of, even a little bit less of our spherical field because it's only using the maximum values. And if the linear field has a higher value, that's what it's using. Um, if our spherical field has a higher value, that's what we are seeing. Now, um, let's come back in here and adjust the inner offset. And so you can see that even more, right? I have a sneaking suspicion, max and add are pretty much gonna be the same thing, especially when you have the inner offset at 100%, but you can see how it's using the maximum amount of value. All right, so there definitely is quite a bit of overlap here with these blending modes, depending on how you use them. So next up is add, let's take that, put it in add. This is a little bit more like overlay and max combined, right? Where you can see add is really adding those values together. And as long as it's close to the, the maximum value for our spherical field, as long as the linear field is close to the maximum value, why? we get 100% in a lot of those areas. Let's come here to add, let's adjust the inner offset. And you can see that, you know, pretty much the exact same now as max with this inner offset cranked up to 100%. If we just want to confirm that, why we can just come here to add and set this to max and see that there is absolutely no change, okay? So once again, lots of ways to achieve the same result just like Photoshop really, or even Cinema 4D, where there's so many different ways to get what you want. You just have to figure out what is the easiest and the fastest. Uh, next up, we have screen. So let's add that spherical field. Let's put it into screen. Once again, this is another kind of Photoshop blending mode, similar to over overlay. Um, I think it's maybe a little bit toned down though. Once again, that also has to do with how we've worked with our offset here. You can see if I get rid of that offset, well, then it pretty much matches um, the last few we've talked about, but it is that offset that does kind of separate these. And if I set that to zero, you can kind of see how we get a really nice, soft you know, transition um, where that spherical field and linear field uh, overlap. And um, while that's not just because of the screen blending mode, I think a lot of it also has to do with our offset here. It is something to keep in mind. Okay, lastly, we have clip. Now this one is also going to look similar. This is gonna look similar to subtract, but there is a difference here, okay? So what I noticed about clip compared to sub, uh, minimum, all right, or even, actually I did mean minimum, um, is that while the values we're gonna see are similar in terms of the amount of movement, um, and I know that can be tricky to see comparing these two, we'll switch it up. Um, and I'll show you that here in a second. The colors are what's different here. And I think that's important to point out um, because if you were using these colors in other areas, other things, maybe materials, 
okay, then clip might be more useful to you than minimum. Okay, but just to show you this, if I have clip, I switch this to subtract. I'm not subtract, I'm sorry, min. So let's do that again. All right, the, the position of our clones isn't changing. It is just the colors. And I think clip comes more into play uh, if you have multiple um, fields, more than, than two here, because it's only going to change or affect what's inside of this. So if you had multiple effector, I'm sorry, fields set with clip, then you could get some really interesting things where minimum might give you something uh, a bit different. It's also important to point out, you know, the offset here as well, uh, and how, you know, we're just restricting what that linear field is doing to inside our spherical field or clipping it or masking it to the inside. Okay, so those are our MoGraph blending modes, although I say MoGraph blending modes are really field blending modes because uh, you will have those pretty much anywhere you use fields, whether it's deformers, whether it's selection tags, vertex tags, any of that stuff. Um, and hopefully you found that helpful. That will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please let me know. And until next time, take care.